Professor Lewis here, and what we're going to be doing is making a pouch for our Jomini sample. In this lab, we're going to be taking a Jomini sample that's one inch in diameter, four inches long. We're going to be putting it to austenitic temperature, getting to our gamma phase. And when we bring it up to over 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, 900 degrees Celsius, what we're going to see is the surface is going to react with the free oxygen in the atmosphere. And so what we want to do is provide a protective uh, environment for that so when the sample comes out we don't have scale all over the part and it's going to make it a lot easier to take our measurements at later time. So the things that we have here we have a pair of pin snips, we have a set of folders and crimpers, we have a ruler and we have our sharpie and then we're working with 321 stainless steel tool wrap that's two thousandths thick. Now this stainless steel is going to be kind of misleading. It's not like foil. This thing is going to cut you like a razor blade. So safety is at all times you need to be working with gloves on because this 2000th diameter will cut you just like a razor blade. So the first thing I did is I laid out a 8 by 8 square on here using my ruler and drawing some lines. And then I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to come in here and cut that out. Okay, I just cut out my 8 by 8 piece of stainless steel. Still going to keep my gloves on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that and line up the lines where the corners match up and we're exactly gonna fold it here. Now we don't wanna come in here, we don't wanna come in here and fold this flat. What we're gonna do is do a double fold on this edge. So at this point, what you're gonna do is get this up close and use these nice little tools right here and get about half a notch to a notch. And again, there's a notch right there in the tool and I'm gonna come in here and kind of bend that over. I'm going to work my way down here, making sure I have each piece on there. Bent it over and I have my first seam going across. I'm going to come in here and kind of compress that down using this tool. And I'm just going to crush it down so that it's solid. The next thing we need to do is do a double bend. So I've got one bend, I'm going to do a second bend. And then come back in and crush that down as a second bend there. So I'm just going to round and double check and make sure I have that really tight. That's going to make a airtight seal that's going to hold up to the heat treating. Now at this point we have basically a tube here and we need to double fold one of the ends. So we're going to put it together, come in with the tool, and double crimp that as well. So at this point we have our pouch made with two folds that are double seamed up. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel from our sink area, and just a small piece like this. I'm going to push it down inside this pouch, and then I'm going to take my sample with the washer end up because when I put this in here, we're going to do a double fold on this side, and I want to be able to know that basically the paper and the soot is going to be on the bottom. I'm going to be able to cut this open when we're at the furnace, pull it out fairly easy, and not have to deal with all the residue of the paper because it's not going to burn all the way up. So what I'm going to do next is come in here and try and get my seam where it lays flat, and I'm going to do a double fold on that as well. So at this point, we've got our pouch double folded on all three sides, our sample in there with a piece of paper and we're ready to go to the furnace. Okay, we're at the furnace and I want to talk about safety first. You need to have your lab coat on, mine's brown, your guys's will be blue. You need to have the high temperature gloves on if you're handling and loading the furnace. These gloves, these second evendary mitts are going to be useful for the people that are going to help cut and assist in getting the sample out of the pouch later on into the test apparatus. We're going to be up at 900, over 900 degrees Celsius. Guys, that's over 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. That's going to be hot. Currently, I have my furnace off just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to open it up. Now, when I have my pouch, it's going to be too long to put in the furnace. So I'm going to kind of crank one side up. I know my washer's on this side, so I'm going to load that to my side, okay, putting it in here. We want to make sure that we stay clear of the hot coils on the side, not to touch them. And to put our part in there, you're not going to load them with the gloves. You need to have your tongs and load that in there when it's hot. And I'm going to be able to push it in there where I can get my sample. Again, I'm not touching the sides and my sample has been folded up on the rear. And I'm going to be able to close that and let it soak for the designated time 
at temperature. Okay, now what's going to happen is that paper is going to burn off and create a protective atmosphere inside that. And while the part is soaking in the furnace at temperature, you can come over here and adjust and learn how to use the Jomini quench stand. So let's talk about what's happening here. Again, Jomini, the nozzle is going to be a half inch, so my finger is representing the nozzle, half inch down, and without the sample in there, we want the water to extend a full inch from the nozzle. That way we have a half inch engage impingement of the water on that sample. That's going to ensure the constant flow rate at a half inch diameter, half inch engagement. So we're going to come in here and, and make sure that we have our water adjusted on the stand. Again, we're doing all this while it's soaking in there. So I recommend leaving a sample, this test sample in here, when you're getting ready to turn it on and test set it. Because when I turn it on, if I don't have that sample in there, the water is going to shoot way up in the sky. And so what we're going to do is come in here and turn this on. Oh, and hey, before we turn this on, we got to talk about where to plug this in. And way over here, I have a GFI outlet. Remember, on the lab sheet, it talks about plugging it into a GFI outlet. Don't plug it into the outlets on the back walls. Those are not GFI. We want to go to this black one over here next to the vent hoods, and they're going to be GFI'd. And when we come in here and turn this on, turn that pump on, I can hear the water, and I can see it shooting. Now, at this point, if I look, I'm going to see a nice umbrella feature of the water coming out around that part. You're going to be able to take a, a ruler and measure the column height that it's an inch above the nozzle. If it's not an inch, you can take this valve over here and open it up or, or turn it down. Okay, let's talk about getting ready to take our sample out of the furnace and putting it in the Jomini stand. Now, one person is going to have their blue lab coat on. Again, mine's brown. And they're going to have the high temp gloves. They're going to be the ones that take the sample out and put it right here in the pouch. Then you're going to have another person that's going to be wearing these other gloves. They are offer a little bit more dexterity. They're going to be the ones using these shears to cut this open. So I highly recommend getting these gloves on and practice with the tools that you're going to use. So again, they're fairly thick. And you're probably going to have to cut it like this. The person that took the sample out of the oven may have to hold the pouch sturdy while the other person comes in there and cuts that pouch open. You can put this in the end of the pouch, twist it open. You're going to be ready to grab the sample out of the pouch. Now to grab the sample out of the pouch, what we're going to be using is probably going to be this set of pliers because it works a lot better. Again, the person that has these gloves on, these oven mitts, is going to have to have these preset right here. Notice these pliers have slip joints, so you don't want to have it set down here. You want to have it up because you're going to have to go quick and have your tools laid out. You're going to be able to reach in there and grab that sample like this and hold it and transport it over here and drop it in the hole. So let's practice that and see what happens. Now after the sample's been sitting in the quench tank, it's still going to be hot at the top side. Again, we're only cooling from the bottom up and it's probably going to be hot enough to burn you. So what I recommend doing is not touching it with your hands, but taking the sample out with the pliers here and then laying it down in the quench tank to sit in the water because there's about a half inch, three quarter inch of water there. Let it sit for a little bit. Make sure the water is not steaming off of it or anything and then reach down with the pliers, grab it out and set it up here and then take a measurement using the temperature measurement device, especially on this right side there where it's going to be the hottest and make sure that it's at a safe temperature to pick up. The other thing is I can see that there's water sitting on here. I could take some water out of the tank and dribble it on the part and it doesn't sizzle off. This is probably going to be a sign that it's cool enough to touch. And we don't want to touch a sample at any time till we verify that it's cool. Now at this point it's going to be ready to go over and take our hardness test. Okay let's talk about the Jomini test fixture here and there's a scale right here and there's a little line on this block right here that you want to have set down here at zero. There's a little stop right here that is going to locate the end of the bar right here. If we turn the knob right here, it's going to move this whole sled this direction. And so we're going to be able to measure our displacement using this scale. Now when we put our sample in there, we're going to want to come in here, and these are magnets, and we're going to want to push it all the way up to the end right here. And now we're going to be able to start our measurements right here on the end and take another one and another one and another one at the intervals per the lab sheet. Now one of the things we have to remember is we're measuring a round object here, so we're going to have to apply the roundness correction factor for one inch diameter parts. So we've just learned how to put our sample in here, and I'm going to go ahead and put my sample in here, carefully not to hit the penetrator up above. 
and I have it located against a screw and I'm set at zero where if I come in here I can take a measurement on the end. Now that's going to be dead on the end. Let's go ahead and move one division up per the lab sheet up here using that scale so that we don't have to take a measurement right on the end of that bar. So I have it set up where I need to be. I'm ready to take my measurement. I'm going to come in here and we're going to use Rockwell C scale for all the values on this. Now if for some reason I come up with something like this at 10.4 as I progress because you're going to find it's probably going to be harder and then it's going to get softer. Once we get down to a Rockwell C20 normally we switch over to the Rockwell B scale. But for this lab let's go ahead and play that Rockwell C scale all the way out to the end and when it's done it's done. We're not going to take any B values we're going to assume it's soft at that point. So we're, that way we don't have to worry about taking this and transferring it to another machine and vice versa. We're just going to take nothing but Rockwell C values for this Jomini test. And again, you're just going to come in here, take your measurement, and apply the roundness correction factor. When you get your sample from the TA, there's probably going to be a number stamped on it. They can tell you what the alloy is. You're going to be able to match that number up to the sheet with the alloy designations that we have. And that, the TA is going to give you a set of pucks. One's red, one's green, and it's going to have heat treated samples from the same alloy that you're doing here. So the red one is going to be quenched, the green one is going to be annealed. And what that's going to do is let you have time to come over here and put it on the microscope, do microscopy. You've already used this in previous labs, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but one thing you want to remember is make sure the nose piece and the settings in the computers match. You can capture that image, save it, save it to your folder, and then label those structures for this. Now again, you're going to be able to go out and use the heat treaters guide to look at what you should expect to see.